Hello and welcome back to our webcast series on perspective projection. In this video we're going to look at applying the theory behind our datum height lines which we had seen in our last video. So we're going to try and put that into kind of a practical question. So the question that you can see we're going to apply is the example here of a house. So we have the main building of a house and we have a small extension added onto it. So here's the 3D view of that object and here's the plan view seen from above. So there's the roof of the main building and here we have the roof of our extension um, jutting out of that. So the question as you can see is kind of already set up. Uh, we have our vanishing points located by taking our two directions that we have in the object and going parallel from our spectator and locating VP1 and VP2. You can also see from the question if we look at the object that we're trying to draw none of the edges or corners of our objects are resting against the picture plane so that means that they're all the edges are going to be foreshortened they're not going to be the original size that we have in the question so this is why we need to apply our temporary uh, datum height line we need to locate an original height to begin with to locate one of these corners on our building and once we have that we're able to continue on and um, constructing the object uh, as, as normal so when it comes to taking our datum height line we I suppose have a couple of options for it uh, we had mentioned in the last video that you're not restricted where you place your datum height line as long as you have a vanishing point to move you back in the direction um, that you're dealing with so either this direction here or this direction here you can take your height line from any number of positions um, but as with most questions looking at the question there's possibly an easy way to do it or a way to reduce the amount of work that you have to create it. and we'll just talk a little bit about that at the start here if you look at your object like so we could take our datum height from any number of positions we could take say this line here this edge say what would be I suppose the the gutter of our building and we could continue that on until it hits the picture plane and create a datum height line for this surface here like that and uh, likewise we could do the same thing with our, the likes of our ridge of our house we could continue him on and we could create a second datum height line there we could do the same for the gutter on the far side here continue that on until it hits the picture plane and create a third datum height line now and that will work perfectly well we have a vanishing point vp1 here which will get us in that direction so if i was to continue this on here that would be a datum height line here i could project that up I could mark off my distance and go back to VP1 and that would be perfectly acceptable. The only disadvantage about that is that you need to create a datum height line for every single edge. You need to create a datum height line for this edge here. You need to create one for the ridge height. You need to create another one for the ridge height of our extension. You need to create another one here for our gutter. Like so. So you end up with quite a few datum height lines and that's not a problem but it's I suppose, extra work that we might not need to have to do. If we look at our object like so, you can see if I take this edge here, so this is our main front face of our main building like that. Well, if I was to create a datum height line by continuing that edge or that surface along, so a datum height line out over here, well, every height that I could have could be brought along that. So that would actually locate me the height of the gutter here, the height of the ridge here, the height of the gutter and the ridge for my extension and the likes of the, the gutter for both the extension and the main building here so if I was to create a height line using this surface all my heights could be used on that one height line so we're trying to reduce the amount of work that we're actually doing and um, now some people find that you know if there's too many heights they might find that if they're too close together that it might get confusing and they might decide you know for convenience sake they might take maybe two separate um, datum height lines and just to kind of maybe reduce the amount of information on one single line and again that's perfectly perfectly acceptable but for a question like this there's not too many height lines so it makes more sense to just take one single height line as I say this is just a suggestion not necessarily you know an ironclad rule or like that sometimes you find that it is easier just to separate things out and maybe to have less information on each height lines and um, up to yourself but uh, so we'll just put that into practice here and just show you exactly what we mean so if you take our object and uh, we're going to create our datum height line by taking our surface our plane 
of our house and we're continuing it along here like that so it's moving in this direction so you can follow our lines we can see that that means vanishing point two is going to deal with lines moving in this direction so where that hits our picture plane gives us the position of our datum height line so here it is in our 3d view what we've essentially done is created a plane like a sheet of glass cutting along along that surface there so where that crosses our picture plane gives us our datum height line so there it is there like that you can see I've just transferred each of the heights of my building across so there's the gutter there's the ridge there's a ridge of my extension there's the gutter for my extension and all the heights there are now marked on this datum height line and because that's on the picture plane like we saw in the last video that means that they're all going to be the original height in our perspective view so there's our datum height line in our 3d view there it is as a point in our plan view here in our 2d we project it up the ground line represents a height of zero so we're able to draw up our height line and there it is continued back to our vanishing point two so the plane that we ha can see here this green plane there is the exact same thing in our perspective view tailing off into the distance so there's our height of zero there's our the top of our height line like that I mean we haven't got any particular height there at the moment but you can see what I'm doing is I'm marking off each of these heights so my original height so the height of the gutter the height of the ridge the gutter of the main building the ridge of the main building and I'm just marking them off on my height line and bringing each of them back to my vanishing point so there's height 0 height 1 height 2 height 3 height 4 all going off back into the distance moving in this direction here like so so that's my VP2 so that's exactly the same thing there seen in our 3D views so there's our height line drawn on our picture plane going back to VP2 so remember these lines here are drawn on the picture plane so um, with that all we really need to do then is just locate the edges that we're dealing with so the moment we want to find the edges on along this surface here we have the heights for this surface here so we want to find the position of our corner here the ridge here the ridge here the gutter here the gutter here and um, and we do that exactly the same way as we had seen before we take our points and we project them down to our spectator where across the picture plane bring it up so there's our front corner here like that on the main building there's our front corner like so we can see it goes from the ground here up to h3 so height 3 and there is our leading edge there so that's our first point and like we had said before once you have your first edge the question really is just like any other perspective question you have somewhere to start off with so if we wanted to go and draw in our edge like so again there's our height 3 we'll be moving back along in this direction here there it is there going back to VP2 so now we locate our position again join back from our edge or our corner to our spectator where it crosses the picture plane bring it up and there is that surface there like so we can do the same with the ridge so the ridge goes up and we can see we have our h4 or height 4 for the ridge height and there is our gable end or the side of our house located so the side of our house located we can see here we can do the same thing in our 3d view there is just taking from our corner points to our spectator where it crosses the picture plane gives us the image of the object so that's the gable of the object to find to draw in the rest of the object going back into the distance we go back to vanishing point one so there's our heights going back along so there's our gutter moving back into the distance there's our ridge going back to the distance there's our ground line going back into the distance and like before to locate each of the points we take it from our perspective view down to onto the picture plane and then project it up into our perspective image so there is the main portion of our house done it's exactly the same thing then for extension what we're going to do here is we're going to draw in our corner point here so the corner edge of our building we're going to locate the top point of our ridge here and we're going to project them out in this direction here so there's our 3d view filled in for the side of our object so for the corner point you can see we take it down project it up so there is the corner of our building going from the ground up to h1 and like that we said we wanted to project it out in this direction here so our vanishing point one moves us in that direction so there it is continued out and we take the front corner here project it down 
and then project it back up. And there is the side of our extension, like so. Again, we want to move our lines back in this direction here, so our gutter and our ground line going in this direction goes to vanishing point 2. We want to locate the back corner, and then we want to locate our ridge, again we're working from, where we have our height line, so this is a l our where our datum height line is located, so this is the point we're locating for our ridge. Projecting it out again, bringing it up, and you can see we have our extension drawn on like so. So, same thing applies over here. Uh, in our 3D view. Now I can understand there's a lot of lines there for the 3D view but um, essentially we're doing exactly the same thing for each one of them. We just Once we have our height lines we're just taking our points, bringing it to our spectator and when it passes through the picture plane that's where our image point is located. So there is our 3D view located. There, so there's our perspective image on our picture plane in the 3D view and there it is on our 2D view and you can see we've just removed some of our lines there away because they won't be visible so it's often kind of it's often quite useful just to keep your construction quite light at the beginning and then you can darken in exactly what you know you're going to see afterwards so tidy up your question so that's our application there and as I say I mean you can see we've created one plane using one height line and every single height line height has been located on that. So I say one height line has done an awful lot in this particular position. We could have taken numerous height lines um, and use them individually. As I say, the only difference being is that it's a little bit maybe extra work. But as I say, if you want and you find that sometimes you have too much information on the one height line, you want to separate it out, that's again perfectly acceptable. So um, as usual I hope you found this useful and um, hopefully we'll see you again soon. Take care.